have you ever wondered how to spot the difference between shyness and social anxiety? Maybe you're worried about some of the early warning signs of social anxiety and you want to deal with it before it develops into something a bit more serious. In this episode, I'm going to tell you 10 warning signs that you might have social anxiety. So let's get straight into it. If you're new here, my name's Maria and I'm a mental health specialist talking all about mental health, productivity, relationships and personal growth. So if any of these topics interest you, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. The first sign that you might have social anxiety is that you make excuses not to attend events. This could even be social events with family or friends. Now with this the anxiety could be on so many different levels firstly it could be about the event itself depending on what it is and whether or not it's something you're going to have to physically be a part of but also it could be about the people that are going to be there you might be worried about what people there are going to think of you or even the people that you're going with it might even be that you're having to go alone which is why you feel anxious and make the excuse not to attend you might be worried about entering the place where the event is happening for a lot of people that initial entrance bring, brings up a lot of anxiety for them sometimes it might be about how you look, what you might need to wear or how you need to behave in a certain situation and all of this is bringing up high levels of anxiety in which you end up deciding that a better way of dealing with it is to just not go. From the outside looking in it might seem harmless but to you and for you the reason why you haven't gone hits a whole lot deeper. Another sign that you might have social anxiety is over rehearsing. So you might rehearse the conversation you need to have with a client or for a meeting or even what you need to say or do in certain social situations like with family or friends. Now I actually think with this some kind of degree of preparation and rehearsal is fantastic. It can alleviate some of the anxiety and give you back some certainty and control. So when I would be nervous about doing a big presentation I'd always find it really helpful to rehearse exactly how I'm going to start, so the first one or two sentences, and this would always give me a really confident beginning. However when you over rehearse and you over prepare all the time then this could be another sign of anxiety. But this alone isn't problematic, it could actually be a good thing and for this I'll link to a previous episode I did on 10 benefits of anxiety because there are some really profound ways that you can use and even manipulate anxiety to your advantage. But the thing here is that if you are finding that you're over preparing in this area, have a look to see if this feeling of needing to be in control or create more certainty around you is seeping into other areas of your life. Another warning sign of social anxiety is to be really oversensitive to other people's words and behaviour. Certain questions you might ask yourself are, why did they look at me like that? Why did they say that? Why did they look at me and say that? Social anxiety can cause people to really read into other people's non-verbal communication and make really quite huge assumptions about what people's intentions were behind saying and doing certain things. But beyond just noticing things in other people's behaviour, whether your understanding of it was correct or not, is the amount of time and energy that's then consumed overthinking and overanalyzing the situation. That's when it comes a bit problematic than just noticing the behavior. Another indication of social anxiety is avoiding situations where the attention will be on you. So I kind of touched on this in the first point, but this one is more about the idea of deliberately avoiding presentations and speeches or any situation where the focus of people around you will be just on you. One example of this might be if you have lots of people who you love and care about, but you deliberately choose to have a small wedding because the thought of everyone looking at you when you walk in makes you really anxious. Or maybe even walking into a dentist's office or taking a driving test. But also we can't avoid talking about public speaking. Now you might have actually heard that for most people the fear of public speaking is worse for them than the fear of death. So it's not uncommon to not want to get up and speak publicly, but if the anxiety of getting up in front of people is taking you away from certain jobs, taking certain modules at university, getting up and speaking at your best friend's wedding, then it's definitely worth thinking about whether or not social anxiety could be at play here. The next indication is all about self-criticism. A big part of social anxiety involves you being really overconscious about the way you look, the way you speak, the way you walk, the way you behave. All of this is exhausting enough and if you're constantly thinking about these things over and over again then you aren't actually allowing yourself to relax or be free in these situations which can be really draining. But even worse than this there's a really slippery slope into self-criticism. Slippery slope into self criticism. <laughs> so criticizing the way you speak, finding fault in the way you walk, using really negative and denigrating words about the way that you are and ultimately who you are as a person. This is all so damaging. 
I'll link to a video I've done on negative self-talk because if this is you, I think there might be some things in that video that might be really able to help you. Another warning sign of social anxiety is making fake excuses to leave a situation. Now, in some cases, it might even be that you plan your getaway before you've even attended the event. So you've mustered up the courage of going to the place, you've practiced and maybe even over-rehearsed how you're gonna behave when you're there. But once you're done, or if anything happens to throw you off track from what you expected, then the anxiety starts to build up again. The other end of that scale might be staying and enjoying things for what they are, regardless of the unpredictability. But with social anxiety, it can sometimes feel like you've had the rug pulled out from beneath your feet, and it can actually feel really exposing. So in that situation, you actually feel safer not being there anymore. So if you find yourself leaving situations earlier than you'd expected, or even having a departure plan way before your actual even arrival, <laughs> then you might want to think about why this is happening and whether or not social anxiety is playing a role in this. Another sign might be choosing the seat at the back of the room where no one can see you, finding the quietest or darkest spot at an event, looking for the seat closest to the exit door, and even making a mental note of the easiest way to leave from an event being completely no unnoticed. These are all potential warning signs of social anxiety. So building on from the example before, you've mustered up the energy to go to the situation in question, you've prepared and rehearsed, you've even managed to stay until the end, but then comes the post-event reflection. A lot of people might have a think about what went well, what could have been better, if there's anything that could have been said or done a bit more poignantly, but when it comes to social anxiety, it's quite a lot more than that. In this scenario, you might be overthinking how you performed. What did the people think of me? Oh my God, I completely forgot to say that. Why did I say this the way I did? I should have said it like that. I'm such an idiot. This negative self-talk is so damaging and so problematic because number one, it's unhealthy. Number two, it's not necessarily based on fact. Number three, instead of fueling energy for your next event, it gives you further anxiety to the point where you might avoid being in this situation altogether. Number four, it overshadows any positive outcomes that came out of that situation, meaning that even if it did overall go really well for you, your reflections of the event have now distorted your memory of what actually happened, meaning that you didn't get the full enjoyment out of the experience that you should have. In some situations, social anxiety can cause you to behave in a way that you think is socially acceptable in that environment. This can actually lead you to over embellish parts of your character and completely censor or hide other parts of your character to the point where you're presenting yourself as someone who you really aren't. In extreme cases, you might alter your personality completely. In other words, being entirely fake as a coping mechanism to help you deal with the anxiety about who you are and your personality. Falsifying who you are is number one, not sustainable. Number two, it won't make you happy in the long run because you might end up developing further anxiety about the fact that people like you for something that isn't even you. And number three, when the cracks start to appear, which they often do when you aren't being authentic, that exposure may lead you to actually be criticized by other people, which does absolutely nothing for your negative self-talk. But also by not addressing your anxiety head on and not directly addressing the problem, will lead it to seep out into other areas of your life, which can actually be a lot worse in the whole run. So those were some warning signs of social anxiety that you might not have even thought of. I wanna distinguish here that there is a difference between social anxiety and having a social anxiety disorder. I don't want this video to be too long, so if this is something that you do want to understand a bit more, I'll link to a previous video I did when I talk all about social anxiety and how to overcome it. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like for me to go into more detail about in a future episode. But that's it from me for now and I will see you in my next one.